welcome the adorable Jennifer Tilly, everybody. when it was Craig Kilburn's show. Yeah. I think he said, she's coming out. Don't give her the satisfaction. She'll get us well had. <laughs> but look at this. Nice, friendly environment. Everyone's happy to be here. Yeah. You're saying your monologue. Everyone laughing, laughing, laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's party time here. It's all there. <laughs> and a full bar in the green room. That's right, baby. Up, I say. I used to have to sneak in my alcohol, or I would send a runner out for you know. No, no. Yeah, no. but you know it's all out in the open. Yeah, it's here, a, right? Go nuts! Thank Go you. Great. Congratulations! Well, what a you know fantastic what? thing is, to do. This is very thrilling. My career, my acting career, is sort of dwindling down. Hush, no. No, no I'm not going to say dwindling, but you know, it used to be I would be the hot chick that would work for two months, and now I'm. The Canadian nurse that asked the kid over to do a little weightlifting. My char- I don't know if you could tell, but my character in that movie was a lesbian. Yeah. I couldn't tell from the clip. But eh? she was she was a PG-13 rated lesbian, and I liked it because, because she was she was very you know casual about it. It was just part of who she is. But when she walked to the window there, she talked about her um, friend, the Finnish bobsledder. Her friend and they cut they cut that all out it was a great great wonderful lovely monologue gone so now it's a movie about a charming lovely kid that wants to run the boston marathon it's a wonderful 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 film right. my boyfriend saw it he sat next to me he cried through the whole movie really yeah he, he cries a lot though except <laughs> No, no. So my boyfriend is yes. a professional poker player. Yes, absolutely, so this is how yeah. I got into the poker. You might know him, Phil, the Unabomber lot. All the, all the, po- <laughs> he's a crazy man. See, all the poker players, they have, they have names like, you know, the grinder or the magician. They all, everybody has to have a name. Otherwise, you, you don't get the endorsement deals. So I had to come up with a name for myself because now I can't just be Jennifer the boob Tilly. I have to be like, <laughs> Be Jennifer. I have to think of a good name, a good middle name. Jennifer Trimble in your shoes, Tilly. Trimble in your shoes. What what about what about the talker? The talker. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) The talker. She wears shoes out with hockey. But this is funny because when I'm on, when I people get an erroneous idea of me from seeing me on talk shows because they're called talk shows. That's right. I talk. Team player. You're absolutely are. Sometimes I shout like I'm doing right no, now. No, you're not. No, 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 okay. it's fine. Yeah, but you're... then when I we were playing, we drew mm-hmm. sort of a crowd. It was like, there's that wacky, crazy Jennifer Tilly. Let's watch her play poker. Shenanigans will ensue. Of course. <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> they were all confused because they were like, well, I don't think so. I think this is the really serious Jennifer Tilly because I had the dark glasses on. I realized I did um, I did a show called Poker Royale. It's on the GSN network. I don't know if anyone gets the GSN network. It was called... I never heard of the GSN network. That's okay. You're uh, from Ireland. That's Scotland. right. Oh, Scotland. One of those. One of oh. those. Yeah, yeah. If I said the wrong country, I wouldn't get invited back. So anyway, oh, of course. You'll be back anytime. You've won the World Series of Poker. That's right. I was, so I was on the GSN network and they said, be really entertaining, wear flashy clothes and low-cut outfits. I was like, I can do that. That's what they say to me. <laughs> That's what they say to me. <laughs> but the thing is, look, you've got all kinds of stuff on my to promote, but the thing is, yeah. stop, stop, I have to finish my thought. Please let me finish my thought. Oh, my God, let me finish my thought. Absolutely. Okay, so this is what I found. I cannot be entertaining and a good poker player at the same time. Ah. I finished dead last in Celebrities vs. Poker Pros, behind Tracy Bingham and Lance Bass. Are they, are they pros or celebrities? I think they're celebrities. So anyway, okay, right. so we went to the final table, and all I did, I put on my sunglasses, and I glowered, and there was an audience, sort of almost the size of this audience. I did not play to the audience at all, because right. I thought I have to strike fear into the hearts of my opponents. How, do you, how, do you, how do you strike fear into the heart of your opponents? I just did this. I did. Well, I went into the final table with a huge chip lead. I'm talking poker talk now. Right. And I just threw out the chips. And I went, I raise, I raise, I raise. And if they raised, I say, I re-raise. Oh, that's... I, I, I'm a bit scared. I, I'm and a bit scared and I don't point, even play one poker. Point, the one point, 
the commentator goes, oh, the tension is thick. What a thrilling game. And he had to say that, you see, because it wasn't thrilling at all. It was right, really, right. Really but it'll be thrilling when they cross-cut it because what happened is I made the final table and my boyfriend, Phil, the Unabomber. The Unabomber, yeah, yeah. He also was at a final table the exact same day. And I always, I almost didn't enjoy, I almost didn't enter the tournament because I wanted to stand in the audience and support him because, you know, they do lots of close-up shots of the girlfriend in the audience. And so I was like, ooh, I can get some camera time. But I was doing my own show, so I was running back to say hello to him and he was running back to say hello to me in between, in between things. Well, wow, that's delightful, and that frightened okay. your opponents, it, you doing it, that. Well, it? it frightened my opponents because they made an announcement. They said, we cannot have coaching. And I was like, coaching? And they said, some of the girls have professional poker player boyfriends, and it's not fair because they're coming out and coaching them. Oh. And all Phil is doing was going, baby, you look hot. <laughs> that's coaching, and you do. We've run out of time. We've run oh. out of time. We're out of time. We're out of time. We don't come back after commercial. No, we're done. Let me run your show. Okay. This is my bracelet. It's very fabulous. This is like an Oscar in the poker world, except it's smaller and it's real gold. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not running your show. No, no, and please go ahead. What else? See to check you out on DVD right now. Many extras. We'll be right back to Corman Benson, everybody. <laughs> Please welcome Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Jennifer Tilly, how lovely to see you. It's so nice to see you. It's very nice to see you. I'm so glad to see you're making films. I thought you were full-time at the poker now. Well, you know what? I just thought it was my duty to come out and promote this DVD because the movie did not go straight to DVD. You may not have checked, ca caught it at your local theater, but it's a really good movie. Right, right. Yeah, yes. that, 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 mm -hmm. That's what I was... And also, too, yeah? this is one of the things. Yes? When I read the reviews, because I'm very good at Googling myself, yeah. they all said... <laughs> They go, Jennifer Tilly, and over the hill, Jennifer Tilly. Oh, stop. Like, like I actually looked like that. And I just want everybody to know I played a junkie. It was a seamless performance. I don't actually look like no, that. No, no, we can tell. I was yeah, wearing yeah. a fat suit. It's, it's a lot of work to look that bad. No, no, no. You, you look and sensational. Terry Gilliam helped me. Like, there was a scene where I was lying on the bed, and I was sprawled out looking disgusting. Mm. And he decided I didn't look disgusting enough. And he said, we need more sores and more bruises and more varicose veins on her thighs and I'm going to help and he jumped on the bed and he started putting makeup on my legs wow he was a very hands-on director he is a very hands-on director yes. I, I, uh, but he's one I, of those directors yes. like most directors when I say how about if I do this they cringe and they're like oh god please don't and then they say things like well we can try it your way and then they're saying to the editor you know don't say that take but when I say how about if Terry does I, if I say to Terry how about if I do this he says how about if you do that and you do more Right, well, that's, that's good. Yes. Yeah, I, so that's... anyway, not everybody loved this movie. A lot of people found it very disturbing, but yeah, I think yeah. it's good when you disturb people. I think that you, that trust is... Trust me, you're disturbing me. Yeah, I'm yeah, disturbing yeah. you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little Are you bit. titillated by that? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's girls out there, they're pretty and cute and harmless, and they stay in their space, and right. they don't disturb Craig. No, no, no they do. But, yeah, yeah, no, yes, they do. Yeah. But there is something very, very thrilling about being in an emotional state of disarray. I didn't say you weren't thrilling. You're, you are thrilling, absolutely. You're thrilling. I'm thrilled, honestly. Anyway, so I think this is my last four. <laughs> to film them. I think it effectively terminated my career as a sex plot, as you know it. One, one critic said, it, uh, if you see this movie, it will totally cure you of your Jennifer Tilly fetish. Wow. So, yes. Are, are you, no, you saw how you, horrifying I was in that movie. Yes. But, um, well, because I play a, a you know, my hand, yeah, yeah, my no, hand I... accidentally touched your thigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He has very, very thin fabric. I could yeah, feel yeah. the hair on his legs, yeah, they yeah. were standing up in fear. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Unfortunately, notice? that's not the hair. But listen, I... I want to talk to you about the poker. Yes. You're like you're like, yes. the, you're like the world champion of poker or something now. Well, huh? yes, I am a very fabulous poker player. Right. And I'm happy 
happy I switched over to poker because I wasn't really getting anywhere in the film world. You so know, what are you talking about? No. You're an Oscar-nominated yes. actress. Okay, somebody that's working at a little piddly job in Illinois, not to, uh, they'll will look at me and they'll say, oh my gosh, she reached the pinnacle, she's Bride of Chucky. Right. But in Hollywood, Bride of Chucky is not the pinnacle. Bride of Chucky is the end of the road. So when uh -uh. I... Talk <laughs> show is the end of the road. <laughs> Talk show is it? Right of Chucky here? Talk show here! I, I would contradict you, but I'm not that quick. All right, all right. All right so you moved so, on to poker then? So I moved on to poker, not to say that there aren't many more fabulous performances ahead. I have a I'm lot sure, of films right. in the can, which will be coming to your local um, Cinema. Netflix. All right. <laughs> And I actually like the poker better because you know as well as I do, Craig. Yes. When you're in the film business, everybody is kissing your ass all the time. Right. Like, I'm sure around here all the staff is like, Craig, whatever you say, Craig, you're so <laughs> wonderful. You're, you're so witty. You're so much better than that other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the minute you turn the corner, they're like, what a jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Did you see his tie? Well, this is what's great. <laughs> this is what's great about poker. People are mean to your face. Ah, in Hollywood, yeah. they're mean behind your back. In poker, they're mean to your face. And so this is it's, better? It's a refreshing jolt. It's ah, a re refreshing jolt. jolt. It's reality. Reality. Yes. And this is the thing that I love in poker. If I'm sitting down at a poker table and everyone is smiling at me and they're happy yeah. and they think I'm cute, that's bad. That means I'm losing. That ah. means they feel sorry for me. That means they're trying to get a date before I leave the table. Uh -huh. But if they're really hostile and angry and insulting me, that means I'm taking all their chips. So ah. <laughs> that's a good feeling when people hate you. You know, all when right. people hate you, that means you've got to the top. Until I got my Oscar nomination, nobody ever said anything bad about me. Right, and then when you got when the I got my yeah, Oscar yeah. nomination, all of a sudden, yeah. everybody said I didn't deserve it. People yeah. thought I was too cute to be a good actress. Oh, that's uh, I, you know, I, you can yes. be attractive. Oh yeah, and be yeah. a horrifyingly brilliant actress at the same time. I would, I would say all wrapped up together in one little bodacious package. We have, we have to take a break. Right. We have to take. We'll be right back with Jennifer Tilly, everyone. I'm here with the lovely Jennifer Tilly. I, I tell you, I, I've just thought of something. Hey. I'm, I am having, I'm not playing poker with you right, right. now, but mm -hmm. I'm having trouble not looking, you know, not looking. No. And, <laughs> and do you use, do you use the girls when you're playing poker? Do you think that? Well, you know what? I found out, I just had a session with Joe Navarro, who's an FBI profiler, and he sat down with criminals and American spies and myself. Right. And I think I was probably like the most exciting part of his job. I don't know. This <laughs> is I just think that I'm a fascinating creature. Right. And he said he noticed he studied me and he noticed that I have two tells. And in poker, tell is something that you do when you're bluffing. Right. And when I go on the poker shows, I usually wear like a low cut outfit because Would I you think describe it's, this it's as part of my arsenal. <clears throat> well, this is not super low cut. Okay. There's yeah. there's more there's more low this. It, yeah, I just It break. depends on how tough my opponents are. You right. know, you have to, sometimes you have to break out the really... Yeah. yeah, right. So anyway, but the thing that I do that makes it hard for them to look at me is I put sunglasses on. Nice. So I have my sunglasses on and I think nobody can tell what's going on in my mind. Right. These are my tells. Oh. If I have a big hand, my chest starts heaving. Like, how do you play poker out there? Has anybody got some cars? <laughs> Yeah. And then the other tell is, is I, if I'm bluffing and I have a really bad hand and somebody is looking at me, yeah. I do this thing that you wouldn't think it would be a tell, but it is. Right. I swallow. Now, I'm not normally a swallower, but... <laughs> And he said, no, when you swallow, it's very, very, very noticeable. So he said that I have to wear, like, turtleneck um, tops from now on so people can't the tell what bastard. I'm saying. bastard! Tell him no! That's what he said! And no! You know, I know I'm not getting...
getting invited to be on these poker shows because I'm as smart as Phil Ivey. And so it's like, do I want to win or do I want to... But you do win. I mean, let's be I honest. Do, you do, do win. win. Yeah. You, I mean, you, I'm not one of you win. Like... I, am false, I am falsely modest. Yeah, you are. I, I mean, because you do win a I'm lot a of... I'm a very good player, but just like, just like in the film industry, in the, in the poker industry, I don't get any respect. Why not? I because, mean, you take their money from because them. Because you know what? I'm a celebrity poker player. That's right. like model actress. Right. It's sort of implying like she's good for a celebrity or I'm a female poker player like I'm good for a girl. Oh, those bastards. I, yeah. Okay, I learned a lot of stuff from yeah. this celebrity profiler. Okay. So I can really read people now. Can you tell what I'm yes. thinking now? Now, if you tell me three things... <laughs> Like network TV, right, so I'm right, not yeah, going yeah, to say. Right. Okay, so if you tell me three things about you, I will tell you which ones are lies. Okay. Okay. All right. But you have to be really frightened that you're going to get found out. Because if you're not frightened that you're going to get found out, you can lie and there's no consequences. Right. So tell me one thing about yourself. Uh, I'm Scottish. <laughs> Correct. Ah, all right. Okay, and tell me another thing about yourself. I am extremely well endowed. Uh. I thought you, oh, you're just looking at my pants. No, I wasn't. I was looking at your hands because they say when people are very confident about what they're saying, their thumbs go up and your thumbs went up. You went, I'm extremely well endowed and you went like that and then your thumbs went up. <laughs> and so, that's a, okay, I don't think we want to know any more about the personal oh, oh, life. Oh, contraire, if, that, if that's the truth. <laughs> Hi, America. <laughs> One more? Yes. Uh, one more. Okay, I, uh, I dye my hair. Well, you know what? You don't, I don't think, because right. I think it'd be very, very difficult to get that shade of salt and pepper gray. Right, see, I got right, it. Yeah. So you got it. Right. You're absolutely correct. I, I am Scottish, a, I don't dye my hair, and I'm very well endowed. You're a genius. I'm a genius. You know, listen, good uh -huh. luck with the poker stuff. Thank it's you lovely very much. to see you. And the next movie, or the next poker thing, or the next magazine you're I doing a poker I write an article column. for this magazine. It's called Bluff Magazine. Yeah. Every week, every month, I write an article about my poker adventures. Right. And it's basically, you know, the other people, they'll write about strategy and hand histories. I write about what I ate and what I wore. So it's very good reading. I'm, I'm all I about it. about my outfits. Jennifer Tilly, everybody. We'll be right back. First guest today, very beautiful actress, a lovely woman. She's in a movie, uh, Bart Got a Room, which is in theatres on Friday. Take a look at this. <laughs> Please welcome the adorable and sexy Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Jennifer. You sure are one happy guy. I am very happy. Craig yes, Ferguson, married man. Yes, yes. I sir. can't leave you alone for a minute. It's been two years, and all of a sudden you go off and you get married. It's been two years. Two years is fair. But what, uh, so, and you get married in Vermont. You can't get married in Las Vegas like all the other celebrities. I'm not a celebrity, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm I'm just a man <laughs> sitting in front of a woman thinking about the number two. So let me two. see the ring. Well, Where's oh. the ring? now that you're married? I can't look, Jennifer, because every I try to look know. you in the face and I can't look at your face. <laughs> Women love married men. Do you find that's true? Yes, yes. They love married men because married men are relatively disease-free and they've shown the ability to commit. Isn't that true? I like, I like, I like also, to think of, yes. Yes, this is a bizarre dichotomy. They're also totally unavailable. You know they're never going to be whining at your door at 3 in the morning wanting a relationship because, you know, you see they're already in one. <laughs> it's like, you know how those women go to the jails and they marry those men that are in for a lifetime? It's like the perfect relationship. You go, you have sex, but, you know, your, your man is like a convicted murderer. He's in prison and he can't get out. And that's what women want unavailable men. That's what I found. <laughs> That's what I found. Craig. Yes. So why... <laughs> so why... Look, I'm just, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. I just want to know why 
did you get married? Is it, did you say, my girlfriend, she's my best friend, and I should? Yeah. And, yeah. and how's it working out? Yeah, it's he great. looks happy. He yeah. looks happy, right? Yeah. He looks healthy. He has a very thin <laughs> guy. Why, why, are, you still, are you still dating Phil? Are you still dating the, the, the Unabomber poker? Uh, yes, I am. I am dating Phil. It's going on five years now. Maybe it's time you guys, you know, jump the broomstick, you know. Uh... Jump the broomstick. Yes, I don't know. think so. You know how I see marriage, Craig? Yes, Jennifer. It's like you're, you're in a beautiful room. It's fantastic. There's music. There's flowers. There's food. There's everything you want. You're as happy as can be. All of a sudden, somebody slams the door shut and they lock it. All you can think of at that moment on is, how do I get out of this situation, right? That's what marriage is like. I never saw it like that. Yeah, that's, that's what marriage is like to me, and that's why I'm never going to get married. So Really? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think you'd enjoy it. There's, you know, you, get, you, you don't have people turning up at your door whining at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, and... yes, actually, I, I, I always do. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. <laughs> Are you still playing the poker? Are you still doing all the poker all the time? Yes, I am. I play poker. Um, it's I, I'm sort of giving it up because I feel like when I play poker, I don't contribute anything to the world. But when I make my movies that go straight to DVD, yes. some <laughs> lonely person that can't afford a blockbuster movie, they look in the 99-cent bin and they say, Oh, my God, a movie with Jennifer Tilly. I yes. kind of like her. Maybe there's naked bits. And they go home, they plug it in. There are naked bits and they're as happy as can be. I'm Get out of my head! Get out of my head! with a friend of mine that was a platonic friend once and it just didn't work out. So, you know, sometimes you think like, I'm going to, I'm going to marry my best friend and it's going to be the most fabulous thing, but sometimes you sleep with your best friend and then it's just creepy. Was it a girl? No. Say it was a girl! I've never slept with a girl, actually, but, you know, those are vistas that I have to conquer. Right now, I have to say I'm in the room with the door slammed shut and I can't get out. But as soon as I get out, I think I'm going to sleep with a girl. Can I see that? Uh, <laughs> sure, why not? I think I'm going to make a video and I'm going to leak it onto the internet. I think that might be good for my career. It would be awesome. Yeah. You make, you make the, the video with the really good lighting where you're sleeping with a girl and then, oops, oh no, it ended up on the internet. How did that happen? Oh, here's my royalty check. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, when your career is in a decline or a free fall, that's usually like the next, that's usually a good thing to do. Well, do the... Craig, you have not reached the decline free fall where you have to uh, leave. Oh, contraire, look at that, look where I am. Look at this place. I'd be lucky to be on a nude tape on the internet. Look at me. Okay, now, do you have power issues? Because your chair is so much taller than mine. Well, My chair is down it's, here. It's your about light of sight. It's about light of sight. Hold on. No, no. I think this is as low as it goes. Oh, hello. Uh, see? That's good. Hey, hey, you know what? Well, I have a good line of sight. I was getting a little nervous. I was like looking up and he seemed omnipresent. You remind me when I'm at my psychiatrist's office and I'm lying, I'm lying down on the cell that they make you lie down because then you feel very pitiful and small and alone. And then they sit up in a really tall chair. <laughs> and then they try, they try to figure out and they pass judgments on you. They say things like, well, that's because your father left when you were really young. And, and I, I really don't... I'm, I'm doing this thing with my hands. I'm this doing is, this thing with my hands. This, so is, called, this is called steepling. You yes. do it and Mr. Burns does it. Yes, that's right. It's a really obnoxious thing. I learned this from Joe Navarro, the poker expert that reads people. And when you steeple, it means that you're really in control. And so you, but sometimes people do false steeples. Like sometimes. That was a false steeple. That I, was a pretend <laughs> steeple. Because people do the steeple because they want to give the impression that they're in control of their own show, but they're not actually in control. Well, I think everybody knows that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think anything's getting given away there. I can steeple all night. People would know you were driving. By the way, I can steeple all night. I, <laughs> platonic friend who was after the earthquake and it was a very traumatic time. You were here in LA when the earthquake happened. I wasn't actually. Remember when the earthquake happened? It was like everybody was sleeping with everybody. All the married people got divorced. They were like, I don't want to be in this locked room anymore. And they were like fleeing. And then all the single people
people slept with their friends, whoever was available, girlfriends, boyfriends, dogs, whatever, they needed some sort of... I wish so you'd I been had... here. Can we have another earthquake? So I had this friend, and his name, I'm not going to say his name, his fake name was Jerry, and he'd been my friend for a really long time, and I thought... Je I... Jerry, did you say? Jerry, 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 that's a more obscure name. I you know, I've got, I just want to say, I'm sorry, I'm I don't sorry. want to interrupt your flow, yes. but I've got a much better line of sight from here, actually, yes. I'm the man. There you are. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So anyhow, I grabbed my best friend. They'd been my best friend for like ten years, mm -hmm. and and we, you know, we we did it. You know, because was it good? The world was coming to an end. What was very traumatic? Because yeah. I had post-traumatic earthquake stress syndrome, and so I made a lot of noise. Lots, like more noise than I normally make, like loud. How much noise do you normally make? <laughs> well, like, uh, and then they know it's over. Like, wow. <laughs> Well, you were um, doing a commentary then? That, that was my subtext, you right, know. Right, right. You have the thing that's, and then you have your subtext, and that was my subtext. Right. And he fled. As soon as we were done, yeah. he was out of there. Usually he would be like, hey, you know, if he was at my house, he'd be like, let's see what's on TV or whatever. But after that, he was really frightened. Is he still your friend? No. Okay. It was so horrible after that. The next time, well, number one, he didn't call me for two weeks. And then he called and goes, are you all right? And I was like, yes, the hickeys have gone down. Thank you very much. And then he other it was really weird because I was like ew I saw you naked yeah one uh, of your balls is bigger than no, the other no The, the, the ball thing, that's perfectly normal. It was one of them was this. Uh, no, sweetie, I swear to God, sweetie. One was like this, and one was like... Nyeh. Did he like walk that. in circles all the time? I, I had no idea. I didn't know. I always thought he dressed to the left, but apparently that was the deformity. That wow. was like... You know, Wait a minute, like I know a, this guy. Oh, that's not too much. Did you have sex with him? No, no, Yes, no. you did, no, after no. the earthquake. No, no. He was I'm, having sex with everybody. I was in a locked room with some other guys. <laughs> Jennifer, it's always a pleasure when you're here. I feel we've all learned something. Did you really? What I, did you learn? I, 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 learned, I learned about the best uh, place to sit when, <laughs> <laughs> when you're on the show and many other things. It's lovely to you see you. You are the best. Thank you. Uh, nice lovely to Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Very, very much. Welcome back. My first guest tonight is a beautiful and talented actress. I am not sleeping with her. <laughs> She's a good friend of the show. Please welcome the adorable Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Jennifer Tilly. Back. Oh, it's the microphone. It's Here, the microphone. I'll fix it. Yes. Yeah, I'll just put so, it in. I was backstage, and somebody came back, and they said, "We have a little note for you from oh, yeah. Craig." And I was very excited because Valentine's Day just finished, and yeah. I opened it up. Your microphone. It's a picture of a cheap whore <laughs> in cheap twenty-nine dollar Payless shoes stepping on a Hollywood star. And inside, I thought it would say, "Hi, this is Craig. Step into my secret office. It has a couch, but it says, welcome back, Jen. Love, Craig." That's really impersonal, isn't it? No, it's not. It's horrible. I don't even think he wrote that. Is that I even your that. handwriting? I did, I, did, I did. I'll show you. Look, I'll, I'll show you. I've got my... My friends no. would always give me a hard time because it would be their birthday. It would be 20 years I'd known them. I'd give them a card. they think I'd be saying something really personal, like how important they were to me. And I'd say, happy birthday, Jennifer. I think that says it all. So really, welcome back, Jen. Love, Craig. That says it all. I think I can get $7.99 on eBay for this. <laughs> Jennifer, you don't understand. I, I didn't want you to feel like I was coming on to you. No, it's like that's every time right. I talk to a woman. All right. No, it's just That's I, all right. I'm gonna put it here. You can recycle it when you have another guest oh, named Jennifer. I feel oh. You can give it to her. Is that impersonal? Oh. It is like sort of one size fits all. Oh, I'm I feel awful. Can I get you a gift? Uh yes. Well uh, yes. All right then. Well, I, government bonds are always, no, always coming in. I've got something handy. here. I'm sure I'll have something in my I'm uh, sure it's something gift. he got for free. No, he, no, 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 no. I, I bought look. Somebody's like, oh, Extra large sized Trojans. Uh, These are for. Oh, Feather! Uh, feather! Oh, 
yes, hey, this is yes. nice. I guarantee you at the end of the show, the producer is going to come running up to me and say, can we have the feather back? No, 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 don't you dare. I know don't this is dare. a low budget show. It anyway, is. Thank you. I look, the te the, there's a teddy bear How was it. your Valentine's Day, Craig? V very nice. Did your wife put on a little outfit and prance all around? Every day. Every day. <laughs> You know, I never did get that little outfit thing. You know. Oh no, that's because you're a woman and I'm a man. And see, men, we love women in little outfits. You're wearing a little outfit. But now. what does? No, I mean, I'm talking about you know where you have sex and you're like, oh, could you please dress up as a dental assistant or something like that? Dental assistant. It's like, what do you hope to accomplish by that? You think that perhaps it? it oh, this isn't my wife. It's a dental assistant. No, like she's in no. disguise. No. Like my boyfriend, we're at the point now. We've been together for about six years, and so we're at the point where I'm a little bit boring to him no. and you know when you try to spice things up like Valentine's Day <laughs> Valentine's Day you're like oh I'm gonna put on some fancy Valentine's Day underwear and he'll be like it's not Jennifer it's a hot girl but he's just like all right Jennifer I know it's you you just decorated your droopy bits with a little oh, bit of red Jennifer, lace Jennifer. <laughs> Boyfriend once, and you know, I mean, I've, I've had many, many boyfriends, as you know. You were not one of them. But <laughs> he's on my bucket list. Okay, so anyway, I had a boyfriend once. He came to visit me on the set, and I was wearing a blonde wig. And at lunchtime, you know, when you're working as an actress, you're really exhausted. It's hard work. It's so terrible. You have to pretend to be someone else. People are bringing you coffee. It's awful. That's right. <laughs> to make out with your co-stars yeah, yeah, on screen and all. So my boyfriend came and he was really turned on by the red wig. And he insisted on my you said, lunch you, wait, hour. Wait, 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 you said it was a blonde wig. So there's a blonde wig and a red wig or a blonde wig in your head? It was a blonde wig. Did I say red? You're yeah. not listening to me. I didn't say I am that listening I. to you. You're not listening to yourself. He's not getting paid enough to listen to the guests. No. All he does is listen to the little inner monologue in his no, head. Oh, stop it now. He's like, ooh, Jennifer would look hot with red hair. And then he's going down Does that road. Did she say red? Did he she realizes, not say red? She he said. realizes I'm Halfway through a story, and he has not been all listening. right. All right, come so on. So, anyhow, my boyfriend goes, Hey, I know it's your lunch hour and all, and you really want to eat that big plate of spaghetti and have a nap, but let's have sex. And I was like, oh, All right, so we go on my trailer, we have sex, you know, it takes about three and a half minutes. And my boyfriend was really, real excited. He was going, I feel like I'm cheating on you. Now, that's a red flag, right? When your boyfriend is having sex with you, you're in disguise and he's feeling like he's cheating on you and he's very excited. Yes. Red flag. Turned yes. out he was cheating on oh. me. Constantly, so it's just another day on the job for him. But for me, <laughs> it was sad. It was the realization that brunette Jennifer is not enough. It's not enough. No, it is enough, Jennifer. What, what color enough. hair does your, your wife have? Blonde hair. Everybody likes blondes. I don't. No, 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 no. It's just that they're easy I to spot. It, no, I read it <laughs> in a cab. I read an article. Um, oh, you know what? I was at Cavalli the other day. This what, what's, you were Cavalli. Where? What's this that? Is, it's a store. It's where I got this dress. It's adorable. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I was in there, and I did not realize how beloved you are. I know you are beloved by me. I You're know. beloved by your studio audience. <laughs> applaud and then they applaud. There's no applaud They're sign. like, we're helping. Sign. We're part of show business. This is applaud and we're the best applauders ever. You guys are the best applauders ever. No, but, knock it off. We don't have an applaud sign. But you know, at the top what? of the show, you were saying, I am beloved. And you said it facetiously, sort of ironically, self-deprecatingly. That's part of your charm. You're deconstructing my deconstruction. Yes. I don't like this. <laughs> but you are because I was in Cavalli and I said, I'm buying this dress for um, the Craig Ferguson show. And I said it quite loudly, two or three times, because, you know, I was hinting that I should get a discount since I'm going to wear their dress on national television. And a beautiful dress it is too, Thank Jungle you very Lady. Much. Thank yes, you. look at Thank that. You. Oh, pisses me up. So, wow. anyway, they didn't get the hint. I never get a discount. And, but they were very excited. They were like, Craig Ferguson. And one of the people working there said, He's an impish scamp. And I was like, Two hundred pound bodyguard, the, like the security guard that was sitting at the um, front door. But then the other girls were saying he's wonderful. And then another girl goes, "What are you gonna do when he asks you all those weirdo questions?" <laughs> and I didn't realize that you ask weirdo questions. You never stop for long enough for me to ask you any weirdo questions. <laughs> Not enough to give me a discount for wearing a dress on your show. Well, I think that's oh, all. Oh, wait, awful. they wanted. Yes. 
They wanted to know what Craig smells like. What do I smell like? You smell like strawberries and despair. <laughs> you know me so well. <laughs> it's a lethal combination. Uh, yeah, the girls find it very attractive. Yeah, Strawberry. Right. We're completely out of time, Jennifer. Oh, wait, show the picture. Show All the right, picture. I'm showing the picture. I have an art show coming up where I'm totally naked. My friend Paul Robinson is having this art show. All this right. is me. Um, if you come to the art show, I'm five feet tall, and you can see my nipples. Like, if you're at home, <laughs> don't say, oh, we had high definition TV. It's all out of focus, standards and practices. Show the other one. I'm naked in the other one too. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is okay. This is me. I'm totally blurred out, but actually, um, it's art because there's sunflowers, there's blurring. You see, I'm wearing my $200,000 Manola Blonic alligator shoes, so that makes it classy. I'm not totally naked, but it's May 11th. Come to Los Angeles and see it. Oh, and also, do I have a movie coming out? I know they cut a clip, but there's no time. But it's called Plus One, and it's coming out one day at a theater near you. I hope that's intriguing enough to make you all stampede to the theater. Thank you. Though, as an actress and a poker player. She's a good friend of the show. She's a beautiful woman. Please welcome the lovely Jennifer Tilly, everybody. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly. Very well, All Ms. right, Jennifer. Look, Craig, I don't have time for pleasantries. I'm here with an agenda, and I'm going to spit it out right away. Wow. Before your studio, before the audience at home turns off the TV and goes to bed. No. Uh, yes, my friends oh. all say, I saw you on Craig last night, and you came out, and you looked good, and then I don't know what happened. I must have fallen asleep. So I know what happens. I am up for the World um, Series of Poker Tournament of Champions, which is like basically all the best poker players in the world and me. And so I need the votes of the people at home. So if you go to the World Series of Poker website and you vote for me, just vote for me, there's a lot of other people you can vote for, but don't get distracted because I'm the one you're supposed to vote for, then I will perhaps win the World Series of Poker Tournament of Champions. No, 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 wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait. Yes. Yes. No, no. Other than that, how have you breasts? <laughs> And I know you think that I'm like very self-centered that I come out and I talk about how I want to win something. I don't but care what I've, you talk about. <laughs> I've been having a lot of downtime in the past few years and I've been writing a book and the book is about my life. And when I look back over my life, I realize it's going to be a really boring book. No. And one of the things that I noticed, you know, when you have regrets, I mean, you're probably like, oh, I wish I didn't eat that donut. Or I don't think you have very big regrets in your life. But my regrets are I haven't slept with enough Famous people. Like, if I slept with really famous people, I could sell my, my book could be on the bestseller list, but I have not slept with very many famous people. I've slept with people that you have to sort of describe who they are. Like, you have to say, oh, you remember that guy and he guest starred on Desperate Housewives twice. And you slept with him? No, I might have. Right. But anyway, so I was thinking, like, maybe, um, how's that wife thing coming along? Because I was thinking it might be really good for our um, career, your career, my career, if we had an affair. Because, um... All right. <laughs> I think it would be really good for the ratings, number one. I said yes. I think it would make me relevant. I think that they could, we could be on the cover of Us Weekly or Entertainment what, uh, Inquire, National Acquire, right? Sure. You could be in the middle. Your picture would be biggest because you're the no, biggest no, star. No, no, my, my picture would not be the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> They want and to sell the magazine, that's what it is. And then your, your wife would be on one side, she looks sort of pale and fragile and maybe a little bit dowdy. And then I would be on the other side and I would look like a total slut. And then they would say, the talk show host, the betrayed wife, the degenerate gambler, that would be me. And, um, and then you would be getting a lot of publicity. Uh, and I would be relevant again. <laughs> well, uh, no, no, wait. No, 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 wait. Yes, uh -huh. No, no, but the, well, there's a problem here. One, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just thought about it. I can't. Why is that? Because I'm married. Yes. Yeah, I, I But just, if you weren't married, it wouldn't be an affair. It would just be a, like a relationship. Oh, that, that yeah, I see your point. Uh, <laughs> but my wife would cut my testicles off. 
There's other things we can do. We don't need testicles, Craig. I'm very talented. You, you, you <laughs> might... You I mean, might not get... I'm kind of attached to them, is what I'm saying. I... One thing I've noticed about you, Craig, is you have words that you like. Like, you like genitalia, you like to say that, you like to say penis, and you like to say testicles. And um, I don't know what that means, but... Testicles? I... Testicles. Oh, I thought you said testicles, like, it's fantastical! <laughs> Are you expecting someone? Is that Craig oh, Kilburn? No, 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 no. no. That's, uh, that's Jeff Peterson. He's a skeleton robot sidekick. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been on the air a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he was actually a youngster when we started. <laughs> yeah, poor old Jeff. Do you, do you like robots and skeletons? Uh, well, you know, I haven't really given a lot of thought. I do like mechanical things that move, so... Hello. <laughs> Yeah, right, there you go. I could probably have a lot of fun with Jeff Peterson if he could say other things besides ooh yeah and very interesting. <laughs> Why are you doing that very interesting and testicles thing? What is this, a new way of talking? I don't know, that's my valley girl talk. All right, you're not from the valley though, are you? No, I am not. <laughs> are you doing well in Vegas with your gambling? Because I'm imagining if I'm playing poker well, against you, all I'm thinking is breast, breast, breast. <laughs> Do you use your breasts to your advantage in poker? Uh, yeah, sometimes if somebody is about to draw out on me, I just hit them in the head with one of them and it kicks them right out. <laughs> what, what does draw out on me mean? You know, if I have a really good hand and somebody is about to get a better hand, then, you know, it's good to use all the weapons you have in your arsenal. And so, yeah. um, so you use your breasts? What do you okay. do then? You, you kind of just... You know, the like thing this? about poker, it's not a very good career because I was an actress before I was a poker player. And when you're an actress, you get a very large paycheck after you finish doing what you do. Mm. In poker, you gamble. You'll play for like maybe three or four days. And at the end of three or four days, you have a lot less money than what you started with. Well, this, this sounds like talk show hosting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's not a it's not a very good career. My biography is going to be actually a very sad little tome. Really? It's like yes, she started out. She came to Hollywood. She saw the bright light. She slept with not very famous people. She got the into gambling. She won a bracelet. Her career dribbled down. Won a down bracelet? To, yes, I won a World Series of Poker bracelet. Oh right, I thought you meant just like a bracelet. You know. That. Well, that's because you're not in the poker world. In the poker I'm not, world, you win World Series of Poker bracelets. They're very coveted. You can sell them on eBay for a lot of money, but um. <laughs> It's like, like selling your Super Bowl ring. You have to wait until you've really hit hard times before you sell it. Well, yes, but really hard times are coming. If we had an affair, oh, I would probably sell it to the National Enquirer. For how much? Uh, well, you're Craig Ferguson, maybe about mm, $10,000. Oh, stop. Right. I don't know. <laughs> 40 bucks, I'm thinking, you'll get for it. Yeah, but I would get priceless publicity. They say Jennifer Fertility tells all. There would be a fantastic picture of me. Well, let's me. talk through the affair a mm. bit first. What would it consist of? Uh, is there anything breasty involved? Or is this... Uh... I think we would probably be... Um, we would probably be con con conversing. Right. Uh, and then I would say, I want to see what's under that kilt. And then... <laughs> You would say, I'm sorry, there's nothing under there. My wife removed my testicles. And then I would say... It's fantasticals. I would, <laughs> I would say, bring in the robot. Hmm, yeah. That would be our affair. <laughs> well, that, that doesn't sound that exciting, really. Well, no, it's fine. No, it's, it sounds good. It sounds, it sounds good. Would I have to take up poker at all? No, not at all. All right, good, because I, I... I like men that are dumber than me. Uh, no, not dumber than me, but I, I don't like people to outplay me, so if you would... Me like chocolate. <laughs> Craig, your skin is so soft. Yeah, I don't work. Yeah. yeah. There's no... No calluses anywhere. No, no, never a day's work in it. Oh, but... there's something hard and unpleasant yeah. on your hand. Oh, it's your ring. Yeah, <laughs> no, it is. Don't, don't, actually, when touched by another woman, we, you got five seconds to leave the room. This thing's going to go off. Uh... <laughs> Grr! <laughs> It's about time you married Phil. Are you and Phil still going out? Um, yes, Phil, my boyfriend, he's a poker player too. He's um he's going to pull a sleep deprivation stunt where he's in Las Vegas and he tries to sleep as little as possible. He's going to try to break... Nobody ever tried that in Vegas. Uh, he's, well, he 
he's going to do it in an official capacity. He's going to try and break the Guinness Book of World Records. And so um, I feel like I should be there to hold his hand and, and, you know, make sure he doesn't fall off his chair and get a concussion. Right. But it's not very interesting to hang out with people that are struggling to stay awake. And so <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> So I think I'm just gonna like run around like while he's sort of at that chair, I could do whatever I want. So I think I'm gonna go around and party and have a good time. And you know, every now and then I'll check my Twitter to see if he's still alive. What's your Twitter retweet name? I don't have a Twitter retweet name. Okay. I check Phil's Twitter okay. to see what's going we, on. We have to go. It's commercial break. A commercial break? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> Adorable Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Jennifer Tilly. is a mess. You can't hire someone to clean this no, up. No, no, I, 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 I don't have that kind of money. Anyway, no one's looking at the floor, Jennifer. You know, my, you know my boyfriend likes if I put on a little maid outfit and I get down on my hands and knees and I pick things up with my teeth, but... Um, you can do that here. Go ahead. <laughs> Help yourself. Can I just tell you, but, though? Yes. I, I, I've just, I've been in, I've been in stir. Yeah, I've been, yeah I've, been, I've been inside for a while, so when I see a woman look like you when I come out, it's, it's hard for me. You know what? I'll... <laughs> Because I haven't seen you for a long time because my career, as you say, has been foundering. I didn't see usually, that. No, I said as you say. Usually when you have something coming out, you come on Craig Ferguson. I think you got something coming out. <laughs> I think you have something coming out, honey, and it's not pretty. No, but... <laughs> okay, it is. Right. It is. It's right. very attractive. So anyway, when I come on and I see Craig, and he's always really attractive, and then I heard he popped out an unholy spawn, and I was a little bit worried because my friends who have babies... Oh, no, I've got two. Yeah. Two. Yeah, so yeah. you popped out two kids since I well, saw I, you last. I didn't. I didn't physically pop them out. I didn't. No, I've, I've had one for ten. Oh, hey, hey! I'm just so happy to see you because usually my friends who have babies they age like sixty years because it takes uh, a lot out of you. But look does. at you, you're as dashing as ever. What? But it is a well-known fact when men have children, <laughs> men have children, it makes them more attractive to women because women say, "Oh, I want some of that. Look at that guy. He's got children. He has the ability to." create. When women have children, the man doesn't want to have anything to do with them because they're like, oh my God, she reminds me of my mom now. She's shuffling around all cranky in her pajamas and, <laughs> and she's like feeding the baby. You know, it's not like, it's true when you have a baby. That's why I never had babies. But men, <laughs> I've, had, I've had affairs with men that have babies because there is nothing more attractive than a man walking through Walmart at 2 in the morning with a giant container of Pampers in his arms. <laughs> have you found that? When you go out to buy the Pampers for your wife, it's like an aphrodisiac and strange women come up to you and they go, hey, where are you going with those Pampers? Are you Craig Ferguson and do you have one child or do you have two? That's an awful lot of Pampers. <laughs> Do with those diapers? Do they even have diapers anymore? Did they stop inventing them? Oh no 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 no! When I was a kid, we used to have to change our little brother's diapers, and you had to do. You, there's a thing. You have the thing. You have the safety pins. You put the safety pins on the end. But now is it like some sort of electronic? Oh, it's a it's a zipper. It's a zipper. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah, it's a zipper. Some buttons. A zipper. You can weld them together um, if you want. Yeah. Anyway, so. That's what I was Well, saying. no, no, no. I've never noticed that ladies find you more attractive when you have children. And anyway, I... I you probably don't notice. When I was married, <laughs> I would say to my friend, I would say, thank God I'm married. Men never hit on me. And she said, Jennifer, they're hitting on you all the time. You don't notice. And I would say, when do they hit on me? She said, a guy just walked up to you and said, where's the water fountain? And you said, it's over there. And I said, he wanted to know where the water fountain is. And I gave him the answer. Right, right. And she said, no, no, no. He's trying to strike up a conversation. When a guy says, where is the water fountain? They're saying, I want to sleep with you. Are you game? That's what they're actually saying. Well, well let, saying. Me, let me just ask you. Unless you're in grade school. Wh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yes. Where, where is the water fountain? Over. See what I did? See what I did? See what I did? I turned it around. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. 
doing yeah. that? Okay. How are you? Are you still playing the poker? Yes. Well, you know what? I'm trying to stop playing poker because Why? I realized, okay, when I was an actress, I would go on the set, I'd say one line, I'd collect my bill for $30,000 and I would go home. <laughs> when I'm playing poker, I go, I go on the poker place, I put my $30,000 on the table, I play for 20 hours, there's nothing left, then I go home. So I thought, I want to go back to the job where you come, you show up, you do something and you go home with money as opposed to the job where you show up with money and you go home with nothing. <laughs> okay, when you're, when you're a normal person and you go out on a date, let's say, and then you say the really stupid thing where you see the guy's face falling and he's like, I can't go out with this girl, she's a whack job. You wake up at three in the morning <laughs> and you remember, you're like, oh my God, why did I say that? Why did I say that? Why didn't I just smile and nod? Well, poker players, they say, they say, why didn't I just check raise? Why did I check call? Why didn't I bluff? Why didn't I bet more money on the turn? Poker is an ongoing, it's an ongoing session of never ending agony, sort of like this segment is for you. No, no. I really must invent that little soundproof cage for the guests to go no, and no. sit in. Jennifer, I adore you. If you've got something to say, I've I want you to get that, off the chest. I've noticed that a renovation. <laughs> I noticed the new thing. He cranked his chair. Have you seen this? He cranked his chair way, way up. That, yes, but I'm slouching. Yes, but that yeah. means that, that's insecurity. Usually when you go on a talk show, the, I, I know I've brought this up before, the chair is way, way, way down. He cranked his chair way, way up so he could just look down my top. <laughs> That's great. You and that's why I'm an American, show. mister. <laughs> hey, uh, we're, we're strangely enough out of time. Do you want... Uh, <laughs> now, here, you might be interested in this. Uh, do you want the glittery ball, haggis and the tardis, uh, mouth organ, or do you want to go for the big cash prize? Okay, I saw your mouth was on that mouth organ, and my mouth is going nowhere where your mouth was. And that's but, but not... Wait, wait, and first I, of all, uh, ooh somewhere else, judgmental <laughs> bastards. And secondly, I can give you a fresh one to blow. Oh, okay. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, oh. I'm not blowing anything on Ryanair. <laughs> and you can't fool me. I went to college, and I know haggis is basically uh, intestines filled with um, meat that came off the not floor. Not vegetarian haggis. I, I don't care. I'm okay. going to go for the big cash prize. Big cash prize it is. Jennifer Tilly, you're going for the big cash prize. Ding, ding, you know, we should ding, have some ding, music ding, for ding. that, shouldn't we? I'm so happy that robot did not say a single word during my segment. <laughs> I'm very shy. Okay. If I win the question, if I win it, I'm going to throw it in the audience and there'll be a free-for-all. That's what's going to happen. Rain, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna undo it. I'm gonna throw it in the audience, hit somebody in the head, and there will be a lawsuit. So, <laughs> you, you guys can help me. But I'm really <laughs> smart. I don't need any help. Go on. Go on, Craig Ferguson. All right, then. That's a... I realized I'm yelling. I've been yelling since I came out, and there was something invented in 1960 called a microphone, and I don't really need to yell. You could hear me even if I talked really quiet. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that last part. What did you say that last part there? Really? All right. Okay. No, what did you say again? Quiet. Looking a little closer. What did you say? That? <laughs> okay. All right then. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is for the big cat. Nineteen seventy-four. No, wait, oh, wait, okay. wait. All right. Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Its capital city is Reykjavik. No. How many sandwiches did Charles Lindbergh bring with him on his famed first transatlantic flight? How many sandwiches? That's so not fair. None. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't hear that, <laughs> but it's not right, probably, if it wasn't a number. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, sandwiches, how many sandwiches? Oh, yeah, right, right, about, uh, 43. No. Four! Four! <laughs> Four sandwiches! Jennifer Tilly, everybody, throw the money in the crowd! Oh, take it And now, Jennifer Tilly reads an excerpt from Linda Cunningham's Small Town Girl. Caleb whispered in her ear, Do you want me? <laughs> Lauren could not speak, but her body spoke for her, arching up against him. His fingers pressed harder, and she 
Goofy move to let him have his way. <gasps> Their breathing became audible. <gasps> Wow, I learned the best place to sit when Jennifer Tilly is on. I mean, my God. I was like, you know, all the, the just, I'm, I don't mean no disrespect, I really don't, but I'm just, I kept, through my mind, I just kept thinking, motorboat, motorboat. <laughs> is going to waggling her finger at me. She's like, like, oh, don't you, don't you. And I'm thinking, don't I what? I can't even think. And how do you know what I'm thinking anyway? Well, it's fairly obvious, I guess. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean in any way to objectify women. I just can't help it when that happens. I'm ashamed. I'm sorry. I'll watch the sexual harassment video when I go home. <laughs> Have you seen the sexual harassment video? It's great. It's very sexy. It really turns me on watching it. it. Really gets me hot. <sighs> We're done, you know. It's it.